Hi guys, my name is Eza and welcome back to my channel. So for this video, I will be doing a review of Again But Better by Christine Riccio. I'm not sure if this is going to be a rant review or like a normal review or a mix of both. And also, I actually did this book review like a video of it before, but then I rewatched it and realized I was just rambling nonsense for 20 minutes. So I'm redoing it because, you know. So anyways, uh, Christine Riccio's book, Again But Better, talks about Shane and she wants to be a writer. So she goes on a study abroad program to London and there she meets Pilot Penn and, you know, shenanigans happen. So I will be um, doing my review in like, I'll split it to three things, which is plot, writing and characters. So in terms of plot... I don't find much problem with the plot, actually. It's just a... It's going to be spoilers, by the way. It's just a normal, like, uh, young... Not really young adult, but new adult. Uh, contemporary romance. And then there's a twist in it, you know? There's a twist, and then maybe there's some magical realism. So I don't find much problems with the plot. My problems is actually the writing. So in essence, my problem is the execution of the plot. And the execution of the plot, it's not very good. It's it's not good at all. I am so sorry. But in all honesty, I genuinely do not think that this book should have been Christine's debut novel. Because it is not good, guys. I cannot in good conscience like recommend this book not even for people to hate read it to make it to make a like, good content because i listened to it thinking that you know i want to make like a rant review because you know it's good content like it's content for my youtube but when i read it i couldn't even finish the book because it's just ridiculous and to be quite honest with you the reason why i quit the book i did not finish it was an amalgamation of everything, but the one thing that broke this camel, camel's back, the last straw that broke this camel's back, is literally the word snort. Christine, I swear, just could not find a synonym for the word snort, snorts, snorted, snorting. I'm just so confused. Did the thesaurus, when she was writing this book, cease to exist in the United States of America? Like, seriously? There's so many words you can, you know, replace snort. Cackle, laugh, chortled, maybe. It's like, okay, maybe, like, every few pages, you can use the word snort. It's fine, but not every few sentences, not every few paragraphs. Every single time a character laughs, it's always snort. Pilot snorts, ba babe snorts, Shane snorts, it's always snort, snortled, snortled? I don't think that's a word, but you get what I mean. And it, it the, like, I just, after 85% of the audiobook was done, I genuinely just could not for the life of me go on anymore for my mental health. That was how bad it was. For my mental health, I just could not go on with this book. Not only that, but I feel like the writing is just so, so juvenile. When the book starts, right, Shane, I think, is 20 years old. I'm not, I can't remember, but either she's 20 to 21. And then there's a, this is spoilers, by the way, there's a time skip. So she goes to this um, study abroad program when she's 20 in London, and then stuff happens there for three months. And then there's a time skip of six years. Six years, right? Six years. And then the thing is, you'd think that after six years, Shane would mature as a person, right? But it doesn't. Like, she doesn't mature. She's still the same Shane that we read in the first part of the book. It's split to two, by the way. The first half and the second half. So, like, um, be the six years, like, before six years, during the... Uh, what do you call it? Study abroad thing. And then after six years. So I feel like there's a huge problem if your character is still the same after six years. Because I don't think any of us is the same person after six years. I'm not the same person I was six years ago. Personality, maybe. Maybe similar. 
but not exactly the same. You you grow up. She's 26, you know? And I that's such a big problem for me. And the reason why I say it's juvenile is because Shane at 20 years old reads like she's 15 years old. 15, 16. And so I'm just confused. Why make her sound and act so young but she's not young anymore you know yes 20 years old is young still young she's a young adult and not really young adult yeah pretty much she is a young adult but she's not a teenager anymore you know and the and becoming a young adult there's some maturity with it but i don't see that with uh shane and in terms of writing also i feel like the author could have read more, you know, could have phrased her sentences better. Maybe because there's this one part of the book that just completely annoyed me. Mind you, a lot of things in this book annoyed me. It was when um, Shane was talking to Pilot, her love interest. I'll get to that, by the way. Her love interest saying that, oh, she likes the Beatles. And then Pilot is like, Oh, you like the Beatles too? I love the Beatles. I can't believe you know about the Beatles. And I'm just so confused because it it tell me, pilot. Tell me you're being sarcastic. This is sarcasm, right? This is complete sarcasm. Don't tell me you're saying this for real. So if I as the reader can't pick up that it's sarcasm, it just makes me feel like Pilot is an idiot. Because who on this earth does not know the Beatles. Everybody knows about the Beatles. They're freaking rock stars. They're the first rock stars of the planet. I'm pretty sure aliens from another galaxy knows about the Beatles. If if Pilot was like talking about some random underground indie band then fine. It's fine for him to say that, oh my God, Shane, you know about that so-and-so band too. It's fine for him to say that. But the Beatles? Seriously? And don't even get me started on the incessant pop culture reference. It's so annoying. I love Harry Potter too. But I don't incessantly put it in the book. I kind of understand what other reviewers were talking about when they say that this book, this debut novel, is literally a self-insert for Christine because it reads like Christine. Christine likes Taylor Swift, likes Lost, like likes Harry Potter and all these books. And when you read Shane, she sounds exactly like Christine, especially the ones that we see on BookTube. Obviously, we don't know her personally. So it's kind of like, So yeah, another thing that I have a problem in terms of writing is the insta-love. The first time that um, Shane saw Pilot, she just immediately latches on to him. Latches on to him like a freaking parasite. Just, mm, you know? And I just don't understand what, why she is so in love with this Pilot. Because to me, he is so boring. Actually, now that I think about it, this might um, go like bleed into the characters that I want to talk about. So yeah, anyways, back to what I was saying. They're so, like he is so boring. And mind you, right? Like I said, there was a time skip. After the time skip, Shane is still as obsessed with Pilot as she was six years ago. And again, let me tell you, she already has a fiance. And Pilot still is with his girlfriend Amy. So you're telling me that six years later, this girl, this 26-year-old girl or woman who has a fiancé who is about to be a doctor is still obsessed with this boy that she met six years ago whom she doesn't even have a relationship. She just has a crush on him and they had a thing. You know? Like... I just don't understand what's so great about Pilot Pen. I don't, I just cannot fathom, nor understand, nor even want to understand why. She literally saw him, like, from uh, the kitchen window, or like her bedroom window, I think it was her bedroom window, 
going into the kitchen window. And then suddenly she's just like, yes, him, him. I want him to be my boyfriend. And like the rest is history. And I just don't understand. I don't understand. He's not a compelling character. I'm not even sure if he's handsome. It's just, he's such, he's so bland, you know? I don't understand the insult love. And the second thing is about cheating. I don't know how to say this, but I feel that Christine wrote Shane to be so delusional. And honestly, sociopathic. Okay. Shane knows that Pilot has a girlfriend, right? And they have this flirtation thing going on. And then she keeps telling herself like, oh, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, you know. But it's like, in my eyes, you know he has a girlfriend and you know you keep flirting and you have this frisson or like you have this thing going on. Either you completely admit that you are going for this guy who has a girlfriend who is in a relationship, regardless of whether the relationship is new or old, that doesn't matter. The fact is he is in a relationship. Either you come to terms with the fact that you're going to be the side chick or you make him have, you give him an ultimatum. She never gave him the ultimatum. And then and then she goes around like in her mind saying, oh, but I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. He, he was the one who came on to me. The problem is, Shane, the fact that you didn't do anything, but you anticipated something to happen, it kind of goes to show that you did do something with your inaction, you know? It's like, make up your mind. Either you want to be the girl with morals or you want to be the hoe. If you want to be the hoe, then be the hoe with pride. You get what I mean? So yes, I don't like the cheating thing. And then that's not even the worst part. The worst part was like, after the time skip, like, mind you, six years later, uh, after, like, what do you call it? After Shane's... Uh, boyfriend proposed to her she suddenly had like a, a crisis an identity crisis she stalked pilot at his workplace literally ambushed him and kidnapped the man to go for like tea and then like suddenly they go in the past and then she, they start having this thing all over again and she finally gives him an ultimatum and then he does like you know say that okay i'm going to choose you shane but the thing is you know how he broke up with his girlfriend because again He's been dating the same girl for six years, you know? How he broke up with his girlfriend was like, he literally just messaged her on Skype. Couldn't even be bothered to send her an email or a text or something or call her incessantly. No, he just sent her, in, sent her a text on Skype. Like, who, who does that? Who? What? And then it makes me think, like, this is the guy that you like? This is the guy that you're so obsessed over, Shane? A guy that can't even make up his mind of which woman he wants to be with? And honestly, Shane, do you really want to be a guy like that? You know, be with a guy like that who can't make up his mind? And it's like he says that, eventually he says that he loves Shane. But, like, he's been with Amy for six years regardless of the time skip or like the time travel thing because he did still spend six years with amy so it's kind of like what do you want pilot you know like if you don't love amy then why are you wasting six years of your life with her i cannot comprehend and shane is another piece of work she's so sociopathic right because she lied to her parents saying that, oh, she's studying pre-med in this study abroad program in London. But actually, she's studying writing, creative writing, if I'm not mistaken. And the thing is, she lied to, not only did she lie to her parents, she created a fake pamphlet, gave it to her parents, and then just went. And she never told them the truth. And then when they finally find out, she doesn't understand why they're mad. She doesn't understand how, like how long they're going to be mad. And I'm like, is she okay? Is this girl okay? Is she living on this planet called Earth? Are we even in the same dimension that she does not understand what she did? Nor understand that what she did has consequences? Like at first I thought, okay, maybe she, you know, she used her own money to go to this study abroad thing. So like her parents, um, 
what is Restu in a blessing her parents blessing was just like more of a formality you know so that they would support her in whatever she does so i thought maybe it's that thing but the more i thought about it basically she lied to, to her parents stole their money and then is completely surprised why they're so angry with her like shane come on you're you're sociopathic, you're entitled, you're so fucking privileged to even do this. Like, if you really wanted this study abroad program so much, couldn't you just work a side job, you know? Like, work a side job, get your own money, and then you, if your parents don't allow you to go, then screw them, that's your money. If you want to go, then fine, go. And aside from that, like, after her parents find out, and they obviously are pissed, she just completely bails on her study abroad program. She just didn't want to continue. She quit her internship, and I'm like, dude, you already got busted. And your parents even had the grace to just leave you to, like, finish the semester. Couldn't you just finish the semester properly? You know, prove to them that, like I was saying, like she could prove to her parents that she could make writing a lucrative career, be it blogging or like writing for like magazines or whatever, you know, like prove to them. So then all that lie has like it can be fruitful. And another thing, yes, I know there's so many things I have problems with this book. But anyways, the other thing that I have a problem with is the fact that she made this such a big deal and it is a big deal lying to your parents stealing their money basically and then putting your friends into this difficult situation when she got busted they were having dinner by the way all her friends and her parents are having dinner together that's when her parents found out that she's been lying and the thing is she made this into such a big deal like she sa sacrificed so much for this study abroad program but the thing is she never you never even read or even see her write properly, you know? You can see snippets of her in her class where the lecturer is like saying, oh, write postcards to your family or whatever. And I'm just kind of like, you came here to be a writer, yet all you can think about is literally fucking this dude who has a girlfriend. Ridiculous. Just completely ridiculous. It's just... And then the thing is, after the time travel back, right, she still did the same thing. All she wanted to do was just be with Pilot and just fuck around with him all over London and Greece, apparently. And then I'm just kind of like, dude, this book is basically catfishing me because I'm here to read a second chance for Shane to, like, you know, be a great writer. But all I'm reading is just this juvenile immature privileged entitled girl wanting a guy so much that she basically ruins everybody's lives did she ever think of how amy would feel yes amy was a bitch to her but she had every right to be a bitch like you are this girl who is coming on to her boyfriend you know she had every right to be insecure of you shane like, and then you can't be on your high horse be like, oh, I didn't do anything. That's bullshit because you did, Shane. You did do something. You know he has a girlfriend. And yet you still continue this flirtation. And then you pretend like you're this saint. Like, God, so delusional. So it makes me think, like, Christine, seriously, how can you write a character so deluded like, I can see something is wrong with Shane. She is so... She's not normal. Something is wrong with her. Does she even have a moral compass? Right? Another, another thing. Yes, another thing. Yes, another thing. There's so many things. But another thing. She's been friends with Babe for six years. Ever since they met at the study abroad program, right? For six years. In that six years of friendship, she never knows... She never knew that Babe's real name is Barbara. You are telling me that Shane never asked her best friend for her real name? You expect me to believe that she is a good best friend that values loyalty and whatever, but she doesn't know 
babe's real name. All right. All right, then. In terms of character, right? In terms of character. Like I was saying, Shane was delusional. Pilot is boring. I don't understand why Christine wrote so many friends. I think there was Atticus, there's Babe, there's another dude. I can't remember his name. And there's Sarah. So basically about like four side characters. All these four side characters could have been condensed to two people. Two. Two. Right? Two. But she included all these characters for like token characters for some reason. Because they're completely not fleshed out. Sarah got like the short stick. She's barely in the book. So I'm thinking, why include her if you're not going to put her in the book or in the plot or whatever, you know? Why include this character called Sarah if she's not going to be in the book? And the... Okay, this is not about character, but this is about, like, again, writing or plot. But there's some magical realism going on with this book that was completely not explained whatsoever so i was just i wasn't it's not that i was confused i was just baffled you know i thought it was going to be explained like in the later parts of the book but it never was never was explained and then i'm like it's not translating well i kind of heard from other reviewers that they were like saying um christine was studying screenplay i think in university so once i think about it i gave some thought I can see how this book, if turned into a screenplay for a movie, it could work. Kind of like that movie, Lindsay Lohan and Chris Pine. I think that it was the bad luck movie. Can't remember the title. But yeah, it would have worked as a movie or like a screenplay for a movie. It would have, The magic would have worked. But in terms of a book, I don't think it translated well. Because in a book, you need to explain how your magic works. It can't just appear out of nowhere. So, yeah. Basically, my conclusion of this review is, please do not read this book. If you do read it, you might need some aspirin or, or Tylenol or something because this book is completely ridiculous with a main character that is just so deluded. You can't like her. She's so unlikable. Everybody in this book is so unlikable except maybe for Babe. She seems nice. She seems nice if she, if she was actually fleshed out more as a character. So yeah, terrible plot. Okay, normal plot, but you know, terrible writing. Execution was terrible. Characters were unlikable. There's nothing of merit that I can share with you guys about this book. Everything, like every negative review that you have seen or read or watched is completely true. I thought they were just exaggerating, you know, thinking like, oh, they're just making it for good content. No, it's true. All right. It's a shitty book. Honest. I can honestly say it's a shitty book. Like with all other Buku Fixie, if you have watched my channel, you know that I made like three rant reviews on Buku Fixie. But yeah, I have a lot of review, like rant reviews for Buku Fixie. Even those books, I can still see the hope, the spark, the talent. In this book, no. Don't. Just don't read it. So, yes, that is the end of my review. I'm sorry, I'm not more passionate about it. I was passionate in the previous video that I did of the same review, but then when I watched back, I just ranted and cursed for 20 minutes. So, that was no good as a review. So, uh, yeah, that's the review, guys. Hope you enjoyed and bye.